Hold still and stop fighting me, his father said, and slapped him hard enough to leave a mark. Jess went quiet. He hadn't meant to fidget, but the pouch strapped to his bare chest felt hot and dangerous, like some animal that might turn on him and bite. He looked up at his father as the man snugged the harness bindings closer. When it was suffocatingly tight, he tossed Jess a filthy old shirt. He'd done this often enough that, while it was still frightening, it was no longer strange. But there was a sense that this time, this run, was different. Why, Jess didn't know, except that his father seemed more tense than usual. So he asked hesitantly, Duh, anything I should know? Doesn't matter a damn what you know. Lose that book to the guard and you'll hang, if you're lucky, if I don't get you first. You know the route? Run it flat and fair, and you'd best damn well die before you give it to any but the one that's paid for it. Callum Brightwell cast a critical eye over his son's thin form, then yanked a vest from a chest and shoved it over Jess's shirt. There was only one button on it. Jess fastened it. It hung two sizes loose, which was the point. Better concealment for the harness. Brightwell nodded and stepped back. He was a smallish man, runted by poor nutrition in his youth, but now he was dressed well in a bright yellow silk waistcoat and trousers of fine cotton. You look the part, he told Jess. Remember to stay with the cutters. Don't split off on your own unless the guarders spring a trap. Even then, keep to the route. Jess ducked his head in acknowledgement. He knew the route. He knew all the routes, all the runs that his family held against competitors throughout the vast city of London. He'd trained since he was old enough to walk, clasping the hand of his father, and then later toddling behind his older brother, Liam. Liam was dead now. He'd been seventeen when he was taken in by the London Garda for running books. His family hadn't stepped up to identify him. He'd kept the family's code. He'd kept his silence to the end. And as a reward for that loyalty, the City of London had tossed him in an unmarked pit along with other unclaimed criminals. Liam had been seventeen, and Jess was now ten, and he had no idea how he was supposed to live up to that legend. Da? He was risking another slap or worse, but he took a deep breath and said, Today's a bad day to be running. You said that yourself. The guard were out in force. Why can't this wait? Callum Brightwell looked above his son's head at the sturdy wall of the warehouse. This was one of many bolt holes he kept for rarities and, of course, the rarest treasures of all, books.